back to something, and at the end, we'll see we have the, the, I was going to give you two interval formulas today. I gave you the first one, the other one we have at, as the last point. Before we get to that, we're going to see something now completely and utmost fantastic. I'm even in lack of good English words here. So, uh, awesome comes to my mind. Another good, if not English, then U.S. word. Um, here it is. If anyone feels like sharing emotions, dropping a tear, please feel free to do so. Maybe it takes a few seconds before, you, before it sinks in. But, uh, and if I may, I mean, when you grow old, I mean, you, you get more and more emotional as time goes on. So, so if I get emotional, bear with me. Um, the central limit theory. What we did with the heights was to assume they came from a normal distribution. We assumed that the population out there had the shape of a normal distribution. Well, I argued last week that many real-life phenomena has a shape and acts, behaves like a normal. Yes, but the hell not everything. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't behave like a standard, like normal. We talked about the uniform. We talked about the log normal. We talked about the exponential. We talked about the binomial. Blah, 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 blah. There are hundreds of these. And then there are all these real-life situations in business and science that you cannot put into a well-known probability model that you will just have to think about what the heck can you do with those ones. This is what we might do. Let's try to have this look at what it says. No matter, and this is a really, really, really big statement that comes here. No matter what the population looks like, I don't care about the distribution. Actually, I don't even care about whether it's a discrete or continuous distribution, even. No matter what hits us out there, the sampling distribution of the mean that I use for my confidence interval the one that I use for statistics to say something about the precision of the mean becomes, I'm sorry, the fucking normal distribution. I, 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 think I did my cursing today. I'm sorry about that. As I said, bear with me when emotion comes out. I either cry or I curse. So I think it's probably better at cursing still. Um, um, the other one could probably also get me fired. But hey, I may have something coming up anyway. Um, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Here it says, if I look, if I look at the same thing as I looked at before, the error I make in using the mean to say something about mu, and I you look at the standardized error, this standardized error I make in doing statistics, in using my mean to what was the purpose of it, that standardized error behaves as a standard normal, no matter how the X originally behaves, with a little catch, as long as I have a large enough sample. But there are no free lunches. It doesn't come free. If N is large enough, I can forget about other distributions. Now I taught you 10 distributions. And, and you, I get a very natural way of thinking for you when you heard of all the distributions of the last two weeks is, oh, now I heard of all these distributions. When should I use which and when, which situation fits with what? And please give me the overview. It's difficult to get the overview. Now I'm saying, don't worry about it. Um, not to worry uh, in many cases because we can uh, many, many times just use the normal anyway. That's why I didn't spend more than two times uh, digging into the details of all these probability distributions in this course, because we, it's not always we have to use the details of all these distributions to, to do statistics. We need to know about probability distributions and variances, but maybe the normal will save us in many cases. And here it is, differently put. If n is large enough, 
we can work with the normal distribution like that. Let's try it. So this is a little illustration. I think I'll just show it here in the slides because we have the colors. But I, you have the R code, so you can try it yourself. Let's try to do it in one of those cases that are very, very far away from being normally data hitting us. What if we have the uniform distribution hitting us out there? So we face a real-life phenomenon that behaves like a uniform. And here I just simulate this uniform behavior by many times, in fact, thousand times, put in it. I take one by a thousand, so a thousand uniform numbers, and I basically take the histogram of those thousand uniform numbers. And of course, they come out like this. I have just as many in the interval between 0 and 0.1 as I have in the, oh, of course, it will be a little bit of variation, but roughly that's how it looks. Maybe you wondered about the R code, but let me now talk about the R code. Now I changed one little thing in my R code. I changed the N. So instead of looking at original uniforms, I sampled 2,000 uniforms. I put them into a matrix with 1,000 columns like that and only two, uh, two rows, right? And then I used this little R function called apply, where I can compute those 1,000 means of two uniforms, right? I 1,000 times compute the mean of two uniforms, just two of them, not a 1,000 or a million, two. Then I look at the histogram of those 1,000 means of two uniforms. Look at the histogram. It's a fucking normal. Isn't that amazing? I'm just averaging two things that are way from being normal. Here it is. Then I average two of them. I take a sample, I just sample two persons, and <laughs> plop, law of nature, the normal distribution pops up. Ah. Not quite normal, but it's pretty close already. Isn't that magic somehow? Well, if you think about it, it's not magic, but it's pretty neat, just. It's pretty, pretty neat. What happens when I average two? I mean, I have, whenever I have two on this uniformly on the scale, when I average them, right? Two, I average on the line scale, I take the average of the two. They meet on the middle, right? So the averaging operator of real one, when you do averaging, you, you, you put things into the middle. Right? It's, there is a higher probability to be in the middle than in the end, because to be in the end, I, both of two observations have to be extreme in the same end, to be in the end, right? And that's lower, that has a lower probability than at least they sort of go like that, and then the, so means tend to be in the middle, right? The magic thing is, here is with N6, N30, the magic thing is that you can mathematically prove that the limit of this, the limit shape of this exercise, and you can test it if you don't believe me. You can just put in K a million here, or a transillion if you have the computer to it. And then I will assure you the histogram that pops up is a copy of the normal distribution exactly. So if you don't believe the math result, you can test the result yourself on the computer by checking whether that what comes out here is exactly the normal. That's the great fantastic thing of the central limit theory. This is our rule of thumb in our course. Of, that's a bit ridiculous to, to, to have to say. When, how large should n be for this to be okay for practical use? Of course, such a question does not have one answer because it really depends on the input what n should be to make it normal, but the rule of thumb that we will allow in our course is n equal 30 will make most practical things normal when we average them. I warn you, it's a, just a rule of thumb. It's, it's a ridiculous thing to say something like that, that there is one choice that makes everything okay and everything else does not make it okay, but hey, it's a good rule of thumb. What's the consequence? 
The consequence is that we can use the method I gave you. That's a very practical consequence. Also, for non-normal data, I do not have to assume normal data to use to compute a confidence interval. As long as n is large enough, it's good enough to use the formula I gave you. <sighs> that was nice, right? This was like uh, Newton's law or something. This is uh, one of the big things. I hope you can feel it sinking in now. Feel the happiness in your body when you move to the exercise room in a 